Welcome to Wilderness to Table, and I have another awesome day ahead of me. Today, I am going after ram. Ram is not the typical animal that you really think of when it comes to the culinary world, and that is precisely why I am up for this challenge. I'm gonna prove that ram can taste delicious. So now, I'm about to go meet my guide and hopefully get myself on a ram today and show you a beautiful dish made with ram meat. My name is Brie Van Scotter. I'm a professionally trained chef, author, and hunter. My mission is to create some of the most amazing wild game recipes with meat I gather on my hunting and fishing adventures. This is a wilderness to table. Of all my hunting adventures, I can't remember a time when the game was as abundant as it has been on this property. Once again, I was met by David, who was more than eager to pick me up for another exciting hunt, the Black Belly Ram. I'm just hoping that I can simply use my rifle this time. I think I'm done with close encounters for the time being. So David, we're going after a Barbado ram, black belly ram, correct? Right. Yep, but you that's say correct. they're exceptional eating, right? Unbelievable. I love them and, yep. and people that every time someone tries them, they're sold. It's so, it's an awesome eating. As game. far as game wise, there's no you know how some of them can taste goaty, that's how I describe it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think this might be a good thing, you know, to have that taste to it. Uh -huh. but it's not overpowering. Powering. Prepared. Okay prepared right. Gotcha. And, and you've got that I can covered, do that. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, ram, not quite synonymous with something appetizing, but this is exactly why I wanted to prepare it. So what is black belly ram, and why will it taste good? Well, first things first, let's find out where they even came from. The Barbados black belly is a breed of domestic sheep from the Caribbean islands of Barbados, although it is likely the Barbados black belly has African ancestors. Black belly sheep are able to tolerate heat and have more stamina than most breeds of sheep. They are fleet of foot and in many ways resemble deer. So it's the afternoon. We've had a, a warm day today, so now you think that they're going to be out grazing the fields. I believe they'll dinner. be on a food plot. There's okay. a giant feeder in the food plot. Yep, look at all the axes. Okay, kind of focus the axis yep. deer. And these axes are very hard to to hunt. They're very wary. You killed one this yep. week already. I did. Um, so they're feeding. I do believe the rams will be feeding. What we'll do, we'll sneak in here. We'll cut the, the machine back into the wood line. Okay. And then we'll glass so we don't spook anything on the field. Gotcha. Because uh, that's a must, you know. We, right. we don't want to spook something. We'll set up in the tree line and find it and then take a you know a shot but be patient because okay. sometimes they bunch together okay and we do gotcha. not want to you know wound anything no else. we don't yeah correct you might be surprised to learn that black belly ram meat is very high quality it's low in fat and cholesterol but high in protein which makes it a very helpful choice. People don't realize that, how good that ram meat really right. is. You know, they, they have no idea. There is no muttony taste, even in two-year-old rams. Black belly meat is very mild in flavor and lean, like venison. And I can't wait to try it. I simply love hunting with David. He is a guy that genuinely loves what he does and in turn makes people like me feel confident and equally excited for the hunt. And it's obvious he cares about the wildlife, making sure I can make a clean, accurate shot on the animal while we're hunting. My mission as a wild game chef is to show you just how versatile wild game can be, but that is not always venison. 
So a big reason why we are hunting here in Florida is because of ram too. When I noticed that they had ram here, I really wanted to go after one. And now y'all might be thinking why it's not very good eating, but that is precisely why I wanted to hunt a ram because it's in your head. It's actually very good eating. When you know how to prepare it right and simply, which it can be done really simple, it's beautiful meat for your table. And I want to highlight how amazing wild game is, and that's including ram. Yep, he's right there. Yep. Okay, now what we what we got to concentrate on is a broadside shot. Yep. Okay. Um, he's about 200 right now, about 200 yards. No shot now. No, he won't. But you know what? That's okay. The Axis deer were right behind the shooter ram, and taking that shot would have put them at risk of getting struck. We are going after Ram today and we're pulling out all the stops. I'm going to be wearing DSG clothing with Irish Setter boots and I'm pulling out the Big Daddy and I'm going with a Howa Model 1500 with a 3x18 right in scope. Then I'll be using a 300 Win Mag cartridge by Hornaday. And for glassing in the field, I'll be using Wright and binoculars. I also like to carry a Benchmade pocket knife in the field because you never know what will happen. And for post and butchery, I'll be using a Benchmade and Bubba's electric knife to get through all those little bones and tendons. Is it just me or do you sometimes sit in the woods and just take it all in? So we are in this field 
and there was a whole herd of beautiful axis deer, but obviously we're going for the ram and the ram was in the middle of the herd and he's such a good looking ram. And sure enough, it took one axis buck to start barking at us and voila, the herd just took off in the balm groves and our ram did too. Well, if the rams are in the woods, then that's where we'll go to find them. And it didn't take long before I had to make a quick decision to shoot. Right on his side. Right on his side. Take it off safety. Right in the shoulder. Go ahead. You got to take you when you're ready. Ready? Shoot dead center. Ram down. All right, get ready. Get shot, get yeah. shot. All right, hold on, let's watch it. Hey! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> and just like that, the hunt was over. It's a good thing because it was almost starting to get too dark to shoot. Ram down. Okay. Perfect shot, Bree. Look at that. Take a look. Yeah, look at that. Good, good, crown, good crown on him. <laughs> So he's gonna be a good eating? Oh my goodness, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, the awesome eating and you dropped him. What a beauty. How, so how old do you think he is? You know, this this is probably a, a, a not a very old ram, uh -huh. um, which makes him very good to eat. Okay. Um, probably a year and a half old. Yeah? You know, oh, great, great meat okay. ram, two year good old eating, ram. Yeah. Oh, very good eating. That's what we were after, uh -huh. meat ram. You know, he's still a nice ram. You yeah, know, beautiful. Heavy, good crown, good curl. Yeah, big, big look at that beard. That beard. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. He's good looking. It's awesome. a beautiful animal. Yes, it is. Wow. Awesome hunt. Yeah, that was a good hunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With our game on the ground, it's time to get into the kitchen. Thanks to my guides, David and Taylor, and my Howa 308, I have a ram on my menu. I can now unveil my wild take on spicy Dan Dan noodles. Who's hungry? After a long day of ram hunting, last night we were butchering our, uh, my ram into the wee hours of the night. So this morning, I am going to make spicy Dan Dan noodles with my ram. If you don't know what Dan Dan noodles are, it's basically a Chinese dish. And if I had to describe it to somebody, I would say it's kind of a take on um, a Chinese take on bolognese. So it's ground meat with noodles and we're going to spice it up with chili oil and a little bit of peanut butter and it's amazing. But first, I'm going to grind my ram meat. I have the hind quarters all cubed up and semi frozen. And all I have to do is take the silver skin off the back strap because I'd like to add that in too. And then we're gonna cube it up and we're gonna grind and then we're gonna get cooking. So let's get this back strap going. It's the last piece I need for my meat. So to make it easier, I'm just gonna cut it in half. You want to make sure all the silver skin is removed because as you can see, silver skin is really tough and it does not cook off. So I'm gently going to run my knife behind the silver skin of this back strap. Now, if you can see, these ram back straps are a lot smaller, but that's, they're so delicious still. These are tough. Just gonna peel it back and I'm gonna run my knife against the silver skin because trust me, you cannot cut through the silver skin. It is really, really tough. So all I'm doing, if you can see, now I'm going to slide my knife right under that silver skin, holding it tight. It's gonna come right off. Then we can cube it into small chunks. This one is really chilled. So when you're grinding meat, I like to have my cubed meat semi-frozen. 
Um, when you're grinding, you wanna make sure everything is cold. So I had previously put these dies in the freezer last night because I knew I was gonna be grinding. You want everything to be cold because any of the fat in the grind, when it's going through the grinder, will actually melt. The friction will cause the fat to melt, and that is not what you want. When you cook, you want chunks of fat in your grind so that when it does cook, it all cooks into the meat. And if it melts, you're just not gonna get the same effect. So, thus, keep everything cold, bowls, meat, everything. So now I'm just gonna make my little slit to help me out so I can get this silver skin off. It's super tough. I'm sure y'all can see. Now I'm just gonna lift up. Obviously you can see why we want this cut off. Let's get that. Now I have a good running my knife, turn it this way, so that I can pull up against the back of that silver skin and always keeping it tight with my hand. There we go. You can't tell, but this meat is actually semi-frozen, which is actually making cutting of the meat a lot easier. Put that right there, cut that. Okay, we're ready to get grinding. So because our ram actually doesn't have as much fat as I would like, if I was to grind this, basically I love an 80-20% ratio of fat to meat. So right now, because ram are much leaner than say your traditional farmed beef, I am actually gonna add added fat to my grind to make it really juicy and moist. So I prefer to use beef tallow. This has been in the refrigerator as well. So it's semi, um, semi chilled because I want everything chilled when I'm grinding. I'm gonna add probably about a half a cup of beef tallow. And that is just gonna grind right in with this meat. Just like that. Okay. And we're ready to grind. I have this on a almost medium small die, more on the small side, um, because I'm only gonna pass it through one time. So let's get started. I'm gonna turn this on. Put it into the hopper. And then I'm just gonna push it through. And there you have it, our ground ram meat. And now I'm gonna clean my board and get resituated and we're gonna make our Dan Dan noodles. So let's get started and make some ram spicy Dan Dan noodles. So I have a pot of boiling water, which is gonna cook my noodles already going. Now I'm just gonna get my pan nice and hot. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of beef tallow back in the pan. I'm gonna use a spoon. It's gonna act like a little bit of vegetable oil since this meat doesn't have as much fat as I would like. So I'm just gonna help it out, put a little bit more in. So when this is all melted, we're gonna get our ram meat into the pan. And we're gonna cook it kind of like you would taco meat, ground taco meat at first, but then we're gonna build the sauce all in the pan with the meat and it's gonna be so easy. This dish is so easy. I like to call this post hunt goodness because it's just the dish you want after a long day of hunting. So now I got that going, my pan is all ready. I'm gonna get some of this ground meat, the ground ram meat into my pan. Perfect. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna gently break it up so it cooks pretty fast and I don't have big clumps. We want small clumps of ground meat. We don't want it to be like thick little mini meatballs in our Dan Dan noodles. So we're gonna get that going. See, it's already cooking up pretty fast. This is awesome. I'm just gonna help it out by continuing to break up those chunks because sometimes when they start cooking, they kind of stick together and I don't want that. I want little pieces, so I'm just helping it out. 
Now that our meat is almost cooked through, I'm gonna start building my sauce in the pan and then it's gonna finish up cooking and then we're gonna get our noodles on and voila, spicy Dan Dan noodles. Okay, so first we're gonna start off. May sound strange, but it's a little bit of creamy peanut butter, y'all. Just gonna add that right into there. It adds this sweet nuttiness that is so delicious. Then it wouldn't be complete if we didn't have a lot of garlic, right? This is about two tablespoons of minced garlic. I'm gonna add that all to my pan. Then I'm just gonna give that a little swoosh so the garlic can kind of cook before I start getting any liquids into the pan. Beautiful. Then I am going to add, let's do sambal or chili paste. It's so good. It's probably my favorite ingredient. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon. You can add more or less. You can add more or less if you don't like it spicy. Then I'm going to add some Chinese five spice powder to it. I'm gonna add probably about um, a half a teaspoon to it total. Get that in there. Then because I'm really jazzing it up and you know a chef always travels with spices, I have a little bit of Szechuan chili powder. It gives you that numbing feeling. So I'm only gonna add a little bit, but you know, if you really like that intense flavor, go ahead and add more. So I'm only gonna add probably an eighth of a teaspoon right to my pan. After all, I want my whole crew to eat it. So then we're going to add soy sauce. Probably about a good quarter cup of soy sauce to the pan. It's gonna great, be a great saltiness addition to our pan. Then just to make everything come, come together, I'm gonna add a bit of chicken stock. Probably about a half a cup, not too much. But what we're gonna eventually do is let that chicken stock evaporate. So it's gonna thicken and it's all the goodness of that chicken stock is gonna be in the pan. So now we're just basically gonna let our sauce reduce and thicken up. So while that is going, I am going to add our noodles. Call me crazy, but it's a childhood favorite. And these are instant ramen noodles. I think they're perfect when you're hunting and you're eating at hunt camp because you can cook them in two minutes. But after all, you know you secretly love them as much as I do. I do, so I'm using these. We're gonna let those cook for about three minutes. Get that going. Okay, this is my secret ingredient, y'all. This is crunchy garlic and chili oil. It's a condiment that you can be found in any international section of your grocery store. It's so delicious. This dish is spicy, but again, just add a little bit if you don't like it as spicy. I'm going to add a little bit. It has little garlic flakes in it, and I really want that chili oil. Look at it, it's beautiful, that red color. It's so good. It's one of my favorites. That is just gonna tie the whole dish together. So I'm gonna give that a little swoop. You see how our sauce has thickened up so nicely? What I really love is when you get those little bits of crunchy beef too that's in the pan, you know, where like some are soft and some have that beautiful crunch to it. Oh, you can see it right there, that crunchiness. It's so good. So we're gonna let those continue to cook. I'm just gonna reduce the heat to low because we don't want to overdo it. While our noodles finish up cooking. I'm just giving everything a, a good turn because I don't want it to burn. If it stays in one place for a really long time on these stoves, it could easily burn because these stoves are actually way more powerful than you would think. Oh, we've got some good crunchy bits going on y'all. Okay. Now I'm just gonna use my tongs to gently help the noodles out, give them, break them up a little bit because they are in that little disc shape. So I'm just going to help break them up so they'll cook a little bit faster. There we go. Just helping it out, helping it out. 
I swear I never go on a hunt without instant ramen because if you haven't eaten all day, it's so good at the end of the day, but this dish is even better. So if you have ground ram or ground any wild game, it is so delightful. And it really, the ingredients are simple. You can find them in any grocery store. It's not cosmic. Okay. Our noodles need probably about one more minute. And then we're going to put it all together. Okay, I think our noodles are done. Let's plate it. So I'm just gonna pull them right from the hot water and put them into my bowl, wasting no time at all. It's okay if they have a little bit of water, but I wanna try and drain out most of the water. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Beautiful. I'm gonna take this, shut that one off. Then I'm going to top my Dan Dan noodles with the spicy ram. Give it a good coating of beef. I mean, ram. Give it a good coating of ramp. That's what we want. Now, to make it even better, I'm going to slice some green onions because we always want pretty garnishes. Just make thin slices of green onion. Just like that. I love onions, so I'm just gonna chop a little extra. Beautiful. Then I have some salted and roasted peanuts that I just simply rough chopped and I'm going to top them off. Top my Dan Dan noodles off with some peanuts for an added unexpected crunch, salty crunch that is too. Then I'm going to put some green onions on top. And look at how fast that dish came together. I'm gonna just clean the edge because I like everything to be pretty. And there you have it, Ram Spicy Dan Dan Noodles from a ram I hunted yesterday. It's the essence of wilderness to table and I can't wait for my crew to try it. Next time on Wilderness to Table. Welcome to Wilderness to Table, and this episode is all about those cute furry creatures we all love, but are actually really tasty, and I'm talking about squirrel. Oh. Right there, Bree. I, you really want me to take oh. that shot up there? Yeah. Okay. I told you we find them in trees. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very serious hunt today, y'all. This is war. We're going in after these squirrels, and we're not playing around. He knows you mean business. Yeah, I do. You got I him. I got him. You got him. Come on down. Yeah, here. buddy! <laughs> That's it. Our oil is up to temp, so our quail and squirrel are ready to get fried. It's always important to have a thermometer just to make sure the meat is cooked through. Have you ever seen quail and squirrel this pretty? I don't think so. Welcome to Let's Talk About It, where tacos are my jam, and today I have an awesome dish for you. I am translating one of my favorite Chinese dishes into a taco, and that dish is spicy dandan dan noodles. So we might not have the noodles, but we're gonna have a tortilla instead, and it's gonna be delicious. It's so easy and will come together in less than 10 minutes, so let's get started. I have my access meat. I'm going to get a little bit of butter into the pan, and then I'm going to put my meat in the pan. And then I'm gonna get the meat cooking, and then I'm gonna add some flavorings. It's going to be so delicious. So it's just me today, so I don't need to cook all this meat. I'm just gonna put a little bit in here. That'll do the trick. Break it up, break it up, break it up. Perfect. 
perfect. Okay, I'm gonna set this down right there. Season with salt and pepper because we season at every chance we can get. A little salt and pepper. Okay, I'm just gonna break it up a little bit longer. Just really want little, little pieces of meat because Dan Dan noodles are known for their little pieces of spicy meat. So I want the texture of my meat to be exactly how I would make it when I make that dish. Okay. So now it's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and let that cook. I'm going to slice some cabbage. We've got purple cabbage going on here because we need a little bit of crunch in our taco. So we're gonna do thin strips of cabbage. I like to use a serrated knife when I'm cutting thin slices of like cabbage or other vegetables. It just really makes it super easy. Purple cabbage is so pretty and I really picked it out only because it's purple and I thought our dish should have a little bit of color. So voila, we eat with our eyes first. There's our garnish. We got that all going. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic to our meat. Right in there. Get that going. Then y'all might think I'm crazy, but we're gonna add a little bit of creamy peanut butter because it never hurt. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon right into my pan. Voila. Then some soy sauce. Give it a good drizzle. There we go. Then some rice wine vinegar. So all these liquids are going to reduce down and create this beautiful spicy sauce. Then I'm going to add a dash of sesame oil, just like that, and some sambal. Sambal is what it's going, is a chili paste, which is going to make it spicy, hence the spicy Dan Dan noodle taco. Minus the noodle, heavy on the taco. <laughs> I actually have a cat and his name is Taco. That's how much I love tacos. <laughs> it was like, what do you name my cat? I'm like, after my favorite food. So I did. And he's awesome. So we're gonna get these. Now we're gonna let all that soy sauce and the rice wine vinegar kind of reduce down. So I'm gonna turn up my heat. And I want those little pieces of meat to slightly crisp up because y'all know that is like the best part. It's like when I'm making carnitas, I always want like the end pieces because they have like the juicy inside and like the crunchy outside. Oh, those are the best. So I'm gonna do that with my ground meat. I'll let this go. Okay, while I'm waiting for that, we're going to jazz up our, our cabbage a little bit. I'm gonna get a bowl. Here's a little secret. Cabbage can, on its own raw can be a little boring sometimes. So you take some rice wine vinegar or distilled white vinegar, just add a teeny bit, like a teaspoon to it. Then add some salt and pepper. And give it a good mix with your hands. And that vinegar just gives it like a good acidic crunch to it. And then it's not boring cabbage. That's gonna top our tacos. Ooh, it's looking good now. We're gonna let this go for just a few more minutes. Just so you can see the sauce is all thick and creamy now. You know what? I'm going for it. I'm gonna make it extra spicy because you know, it's just me eating these tacos today and I really like spicy tacos. So you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. Cause I'm the chef today. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. So you can see in my pan, all the sauce and all the liquids have basically evaporated and reduced down and they left all of their goodness. 
So now I can take this off the heat and I'm ready to start my tacos. So that's gonna go. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. Then my tortillas and I'm gonna paint them with olive oil. Just like that. And one more. Okay, those are gonna go on both sides. Plate, so we can start plating. Wipe this off, like that. Beautiful. Beautiful tacos. So I actually did a big vacation in China and that's where I was first introduced to Dan Dan noodles. And y'all know I have a cat named Taco, so it was just really fitting that I make Dan Dan tacos, right? <laughs> so here we go. Beautiful. And there you have it, my recipe for spicy Dan Dan tacos, not noodles.